The left-wing Labour journalist and Corbyn supporter Owen Jones is with me and we're joined from West London by the Conservative writer Toby Young who also wanted to vote for Jeremy Corbyn as Labour leader, obviously for very different reasons. Toby Young, you did try a bit of entryism yourself and they blocked you. Isn't that proof that this is a process which is working and isn't anything other than democratic? Well, I think it was um, quite easy for them to uh, rumble me because uh, in the box on the website, when I was asked why I had joined as a registered supporter, I wrote to consign Labour to electoral oblivion. Um, so you didn't need to be Sherlock Holmes to figure out I didn't have the party's best interests at heart. So I don't think they'll, have, they'll catch everyone as easily. I mean, Michael Crick was saying there that he, in his analysis, this entryism, as it were, is very, very small. And this phenomenon surrounding Jeremy Corbyn is something much bigger than that. I mean, do you accept that? Um, I think it, it, it remains to be seen, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of um, post-result analysis. Um, but um, if a majority of long-term Labour members are in favour of Corbyn, then it beggars belief. Uh, how many elections does Labour have to lose when it puts up a left-wing leader in order for the message to sink home. Look at Michael Foote, probably the nearest equivalent to Jeremy Corbyn. In 1983, the Foote-led Labour Party polled less than 28% of the popular vote, its lowest share uh, since 1918. I mean, no, in 97, Jones... by contrast, when Blair led the Labour Party, uh, Labour romped home to a massive overall majority with 43% of the vote. You know, when's uh, it going to sink in? Yeah, Owen Jones, I mean, that, that point, you have because you do have one Labour insider after another queuing up to say, as Alistair Campbell has said today, anyone but Corbyn. Well, I think most people don't think in terms of left or right. I think they think in terms of issues to be addressed in a way that's convincing and coherent, that resonates with their experiences, told in a language they understand that meets the ambitions of themselves, their families, their communities and the, the country as a whole. I think what is interesting, and Jeremy Corbyn, like any Labour leader, would face a formidable challenge, no question about that, and he'd uh, face quite an attack on him, I think, from, from all directions. But what I think he could do, for example, if you take Scotland... Labour lost 40 of its 41 seats in Scotland to the Scottish National Party. A lot of Scottish Labour supporters believe their old party had deserted them. Uh, whether it be, I mean, it was an interesting poll by YouGov of, of UKIP supporters. And uh, when they were asked a few weeks ago who would, which Labour leader would make the most come back to Labour, it was actually Jeremy Corbyn. And then you think of people who don't vote. But well, I mean, we've talked to a lot of people, sorry to interrupt no, you, but we talked to an awful lot of people who start out by saying, yes, I'm going to vote for Corbyn. And when you press them a bit, they actually say they don't believe he can be Prime Minister. So when does this become something more than a protest vote? I don't think it's a protest vote. I think, it's, I think it patronises people to suggest it is. I think the reason he's doing very well is because he has an optimistic vision, uh, unlike many of his rivals. And, you know, people on the left often are accused of, of only having slogans, of knowing what they're against but not what they're for. But he's been suggesting policies like a national education service to su support lifelong learning, uh, investing in uh, high-tech jobs of the, the future. The point is about electability to well, that's the point. But, I mean, of the country. Well, I, you know, that's why I wanted to answer your point, because I think it is about policies that inspire people. Uh, I think, for example, a public investment bank, which he's been suggesting, uh, I think whether it be dealing with a housing crisis, uh, both uh, council housing, private rented sector, also extending home ownership for those who want it without flogging off social housing. Uh, whether it be, for example, young See, people robbed often uh, of a future, give it in terms of education, housing, jobs, skills and so, so on. Sorry, to, Toby Young, I mean, the, the, the people on the right and the left are running scared of, this, of Jeremy Corbyn. And that's because they do think that he no. will become Labour leader and that there is a potential, that there is huge popular support behind him. I don't think uh, David him. Cameron... I don't think David Cameron and George Osborne are running scared of the prospect of Jeremy Corbyn becoming the leader of the Labour Party. Um, uh, Owen's analysis is just wishful thinking. The reason um, the SNP did well in Scotland is because of the nationalist vote, not because they were anti-austerity. John Cruddus, who isn't even on the right of the Labour Party, uh, conducted uh, a poll as part of Labour's post-election analysis. Um, and uh, in that poll, discovered that 58% of the general public uh, agree with the statement uh, that uh, Britain has to live within its means, and for that reason, cutting the deficit 
must be a priority. Uh, well, Labour just, uh, didn't lose the general election because it was austerity light. It lost the general election because people didn't trust uh, Labour uh, well, on respond the economy. To that. Well, ju just on that, I mean, firstly, the pollster John Curtis, now he's the one who did the exit poll, one of the few pollsters to come out of the election uh, in any glory, and he, he pointed out the reason in Scotland a huge number of ex-Labour voters went to the SNP is because they felt that no longer did Scottish Labour, the Labour Party as a whole, support social justice. And if you meet ex-Labour voters, they often call the Labour Party the Red Tories now. As a, as a, in terms of living within it, at the country's means, who disagrees with that? And the point yeah. Jeremy Corbyn has made is to balance the box, is to eradicate the deficit, but not to do it on the backs of working people, low-paid people, disabled people, and so on. So a genuine living wage, dealing with a housing crisis so we don't spend billions uh, on private landlords with housing benefit and, and create jobs, skill jobs, and so on. That's what it's about. Balance the docks, but do it in a fair and oh, just and equal and fair way. I think that's reasonable. Toby Young, very briefly. How, how is Jeremy Corbyn going to balance the books when he said he wants to nationalise the energy companies? The cost of doing that, according to independent analysis, is $185 billion. To That's not going to balance the book. That's going to plunge us into bankruptcy. We'll be the next Venezuela. Toby Young, you've got the last word this evening.